Hey guys, it's Merce. Welcome back to Harpies in the Trees, where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. If you haven't subscribed already, but you do like these videos and would like to get more, please hit that subscribe button and I will keep them coming. So I wanted to run something by you guys real quick. I had this idea, I don't know if it's a good idea, but I thought it might be interesting. So I was thinking about using the captions as a spoiler panel for extra information, for information that you choose to know. In the beginning of the video, I would let you know that this option is available and I will also alert you when you can turn the captions on and learn about these spoilers. So if I had questions or concerns or I just plain straight didn't like something, but it would be a spoiler, I would add those comments in the captions. And I would let you know when those captions were available so you could turn them on if you wanted to know about what it was I specifically didn't like about important characters or storylines in the book. So let me know below in the comments if having something like a spoiler caption would be useful for you guys. So let's get into it and let's talk about Beast by Matt Wazilowski. As usual, let me give you the setup. Our book opens up with a transcript of a YouTube video done by Lizzie B. She's welcoming us back to her channel and she's also describing to us a challenge that she's going to be participating in. Pump day in six days. Lizzie sounds like your typical YouTuber. She is very energetic, she wants to share things with you, and she's very, very excited to take on new challenges and to kind of document this process. But will she be dead in six days? Well, you'll have to subscribe to find out. Following the YouTube video, we read a news piece about Lizzie B's death. They give some of the details, and they are also interviewing people on the street, asking them if they think that this crime was solved, and there doesn't really seem to be that much division about this murder. Most people feel the people who were incarcerated for this murder were the right ones. After the news piece, we then get to meet Scott King, who is the host of the podcast Six Stories, and he explains his intentions for this podcast. And it all starts with a random act of vandalism that gets his attention. But this case is over two years old, so is there really more to discover about this heinous and gory crime? So I just finished the first 42 pages of Beast. It's after 10 o'clock now, and I am really enjoying it so far. It almost feels like a mystery kit or something, like you have all this stuff that you're kind of just perusing through in a certain manner. So I really liked this setup. I thought that it was very interesting and it's formatted in a very unique way as well. Each chapter is an episode. There are six episodes in here and it's in a type of transcripted format. So Supernatural Horror, as you know, is my favorite thing and that's really what I enjoy reading. But I also like mysteries. And even though this is not a horror book, I wouldn't classify this as horror. I wouldn't say that it's horror. Um, but it's definitely a crime mystery. And it definitely has this shade of serial podcast and true crime and that's what it's going for. And it really does a, a good job at doing that. And it also kind of plays out like if you ever watch um, YouTube videos where they're talking about obscure internet mysteries or deaths or something. And it definitely feels like that and it feels it's really fun. As we know, social media is a place where we can express ourselves and also share, you know, the, the joy of what we liked with others. But it's also a place that can be used as a weapon. It can be used for validation, corruption, doxing, manipulation, blackmail, fame. I mean, so many different <laughs> ways to utilize such a tool. Many people spend a lot of time revealing uh, the true faces behind the uh, most popular YouTuber stars, um, digging into their lives, um, making connections that were always there or never there, um, spilling the tea, exposing, canceling, all that kind of stuff. The social media aspect in Beast is a little bit more traditional, um, where it's not, it's not like dark net type thing. So I am on episode four. I just finished episode three. It's 8.30 p.m. at night and I'm on page 121. We're also getting a look into uh, social media fame and what people will do for that and also what the fans will do for the people that they um, really admire. We talked to the younger brother of the victim and we are getting a different type of perspective um, about who this girl was, what her 
what she was really like behind um, closed doors, I guess. And uh, it's just his perspective, but it's pretty interesting and it's throwing a few kinks into everything. So that's exciting. This story is telling a story about a murder in a small forgotten town. Everybody knows everybody. Rumors are everywhere. And you're one of the male suspects. So the people that you always expect to be the ones who are um, up to no good. All I could say about this episode is we are getting to see a little bit of a different side of the people who are of the people who are convicted of this crime and um, things are getting twisty. They're getting very, very twisty. At the moment, we're just sort of at that point in the podcast where you're like, okay, episode six coming up. We're going to get all of our answers. It's going to be really satisfying, I hope. So we'll see. So Scott King, the host of Six Stories, is having to dig and he is trying to figure out, one, is there more to the story? And two, can he find it? And it's really giving him a run for his money a little bit. I didn't find it scary, but it does have its moments of being creepy. Um, it has really cool descriptions. It has an interesting plot. And I feel that Scott King is a really good, satisfying interviewer, which is something that you would always want in a podcast. The first five episodes I really enjoyed. I felt that they were extremely intriguing and really had me hooked. Um, it's definitely a page turner. Um, I like character driven things. So if you like that as well, I think that you will enjoy this. Last Days by Adam Neville also has something similar to this because there is a main character who is interviewing people for a documentary. And you know, some people thought that some of those chapters were a bit long or dragged a bit, but I really enjoyed them. I, I really liked it. I love this interviewing format um, with this trend and every episode has a transcripted video for you to read that launches you into the next day of the challenge. So it's really cool. The last episode was good, but it did drag and I did feel like the reveal was anticlimactic. Um, just in its execution. Um, Story-wise, I think it was fine. I just think that the execution was... It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. Let's say Friday. So it's Friday, it's 1.30 in the afternoon, and I finally finished episode six. This last episode dragged a lot, and I think that the reveal was really anticlimactic, and it was very muddy. I just didn't, it, it came together, but when it came together, I, I was just kind of like, hmm, didn't pack enough punch for me. And I, I, I really did enjoy reading it though. This was a really uh, fun thriller, fun mystery. I enjoyed um, meeting these people. I think I wish that this reveal had been done a little differently, just for me and my taste. But I think it was still a really interesting journey. Like when I think about good crime podcast, it's all about them leading you in misdirection and also kind of like giving you information in a certain order that's sort of leading you down a specific narrative. That's the pleasure and the joy of it. So I think it really did accomplish like what I set out to do, which was to be this type of rabbit hole podcast in a text format that begins with a simple question and there's a person who's willing to force the story even when it doesn't want to be forced. So I had a little bit of a difficult time rating this one because my rating system is set up for horror um, and I use this quantitative system that basically has a list of all of the things that I like about horror and things I don't like and then it tallies everything up and then it gives me a total by subtracting and multiplying and dividing and it gives me a score. And I do this so that my scoring systems are consistent. Um, so I have two scores for this book. I did go into this thinking that it was a horror book. It's not a horror book, it's a mystery book. And I think that the mystery was really well done. I thought it was a different page turner. I really liked the, the whole, the format and everything. So as a mystery, I would definitely give this a four star review. If I applied my horror rating system to this book, 
it would be 62 points out of 114, which I guess like a three and a half star read, which is still really good. I did really enjoy this and I thought it was really interesting. So even though I got this book out of a horror subscription box, I don't really think it's, I, I wouldn't consider it to be horror. For me, horror is supernatural. I, I, and I know that's not everyone's definition of horror, but for me, that's kind of like just how I personally define it. Like when I think about horror, horror is like one of those genres that's kind of stretched super thin. You know, it's an umbrella and it can, it can kind of be a lot of things which can be very vague. It's like, you know, what defines horror as horror? There's a lot of things that are scary, but I wouldn't really consider them horror. So that's my review for Beast by Matt Wazolowski. If you have read this, let me know what you thought about the ending. Did you feel the same way as I did, or were you really surprised and shocked? So that is it for me. I am sure you noticed my uh, multicolored candles tonight. I've ran out of candles and I'm gonna have to go out into the apocalypse and find some more. <laughs> so that's gonna be a little tricky, I think. So I hope you guys have a very good night. Please take care of yourselves. You know the drill, wash your hands, stay home, and I will talk to you next time.